Hello and welcome to FIN 2601. I'm Mr. H and I will be going and I will be taking you through FIN 2601. We are going to cover six chapters of this module. We are going to look into detail of all these sections and how they comprehend each other. But for today, I just want to introduce to you to the module and show you which topics we are going to look at and what each topic covers. So I'm going to be brief by introducing to you these topics. First and foremost, we will cover the first topic which covers the role and environment. of managerial finance. Under this topic, we will look into the detail of how the financial sector comprises of and how it operates in terms of who is responsible for what. For example, we have financial managers. What, are, what do they focus on? What is the difference between the financial managers and accountants? What is the difference between financial managers and any other department in the Indian organization? So we'll be focusing more on what is it or what are the fundamentals and what is in the sphere of managerial finance? What is it that we look at when we talk about managerial finance? What is it that we focus on? What are those elements? What is the responsibility of a manager? What does he do? What is expected of him? How does he operate and in which environment does he operate? So this is what is going to be covered in this topic. So on this topic is going to give an overview of the managerial finance aspect of the module. Then after that, we are going to look at the financial statements and analysis. Financial statements and analysis. Unlike accounting, in finance, we are more focused on how these financial statements affect the outcome of the intended purpose of investment. Meaning to say, an investor, when they invest all they want is a, is a result. So we analyze these financial statements so that we will be able to know if it is giving us the result that we intended as the investors. So as a financial manager, we use this, this information to see if it's going to be lucrative for our investors or not. Because we are given a mandate by the investors that, are, that is usually referred to as the shareholders, we are given a mandate to make sure that we grow the company's value and also to make sure that we grow their investments to yield maximum returns. So by analyzing financial statements, we will be looking at the profitability of the business or an investment or we are looking at the liquidity part of the organization or a company to say does the company have enough funds or enough money for any further investments or any payment that needs to be done when it falls due. All these aspects we will look at them in under this topic so that we can be able to know how to analyze this and to not this topic comes with a lot of formulas that we are going to look at them. But however, you don't need to worry about that because we are going to cover those uh, formulas in detail and interpret them so that you will be able to understand them. After covering financial statements and analysis, we are going to look at risk and return. Fundamentally, in finance, Every aspect that we deal with in finance 
has to do with the risk and return. For every amount of risk that an investor takes, there must be an equivalent or an amount of return that suffices the risk that has been taken by the investor. So we'll look at how to define risk, how do we define a return, and when we define this, how do we determine the amount of risk of a particular investment, and also how do we determine the return that can be expected or that can be obtained of each and every given amount of risk. So by having to note that, this is the chapter that we are going to cover in detail, where we talk about the types of risks and the returns that can be associated with those risks. And furthermore, we will also look at time value of money. Time value of money focuses much on the period in which the investment is going to take place and what are the impact or the influence that this investment might be influenced with to yield a result. For example, you, you remember the old saying that says a, a, a rent today is not worth as much as a rent in future. That means a hundred rand that we have today is, is, is worth less than the hundred rand we have in, in 2010 or beyond. That only in, indicates the time value of money because money is affected by so many things inflation change in interest rate the all those aspects so we need to deal with that under term value of money after term value of money we are also going to focus our attention to interest rates and bond valuation we need to look at interest rates and bond valuation interest rates and bond valuation this focuses on how do we determine the interest rate in the economy and the impact of the change in interest rate to any investment that going that is going to be undertaken by any investor in the industry right so usually we use bonds as the basis of borrowing which is a debt a bond is a debt that we use for borrowing and it marks the the measuring a district of interest rate that is used in the economy because the interest rate of a bond that is issued by the reserve bank will determine how much interest rate you are going to determine in in the commercial banking sector which is a which determines the prime rate from the repo rate all the way to prime rate and so on. So we'll be looking at how do we determine interest rates and how do we value a bond? How do we know the value of a bond at a given time? Which, in, which works more or less the same with term value of money, but the difference is term value of money changes in terms of the future value, but for a bond, the future value is constant. What changes is the prices, interest, and the period. So we are going to look at that in detail. After looking at that, we are also going to look at share valuation. Share valuation. Under share valuation, we are going to focus on how do we determine the value of each share. That is, if a company is operating Every company is always eager to know how much is the value of their share so that they can be able to determine the value of their business at a particular point in time. So by so doing, we are going to focus on how do we value a share. Each share, whether it's a, it's a preference share or it's an ordinary share. And what are elements to, to include when you are determining the value of the share? So by looking at these six topics, 
we would have covered everything that needs to be covered in this module. So I'm looking forward to work with you and go through each and every topic to which we are going to explain the concept that has to be introduced on each and every topic and also clarify on how each topic determines the success and failure of another. That means holistically of all these six topics that we are going to cover, they all work hand in hand. So as a financial manager, when you are analyzing every aspect of your investments in an organization, you have to have all these on your table. To, so that you can be able to make valuable decisions in terms of the investments and the outcome of the investments to see whether the investment that you want to undertake is worthwhile or not. You need to look at all these six elements. So we're going to explore these six elements in detail chapter by chapter as we go through the semester. So that's all for now. See you on the next segment when we look at this in greater detail. Thank you.